Okay, shall we resume? Um, all right. So, Um, oh, we can't see my sins. Go back to that song. Let's see where we are um, for this course. Okay. Um, so previously we have covered um, up to module what? six. Okay. So we are already into scientific writing. Yeah. Um, so previously we talked about. Uh, scientific writing in general, and then talk about uh, proposal writing, isn't it? Yeah, so research proposal. And this one we relate with our final year project proposal. And uh, in module six, we have talked about what are the components that you should write in, uh, in a research proposal, including FYP proposal. So it should you um there must be abstract there must be introduction literature review um materials and methods uh expected outcomes um research schedule um uh, references okay that's all yeah so those things you should write in your fyp proposal um and please take note that that is fyp1 uh and in fyp2 uh, what you have to write at the end of your final year project, after you have done your research in the lab, you have to write uh, what we call FYP thesis. Okay, there are two different uh, documents, FYP thesis. And some of the things in your proposal you can use, but some of the things you have to edit. Yeah? For example, uh, abstract. Introduction might not be that really different un unless you have something different, but like maybe you uh, change a little bit your objective or it depends on your supervisor. Um, then you have to change in your FYP to report or thesis. Okay, but basically if everything goes similar, uh, your introduction might be still the same. Literature review as well, but of course after you have um, you know, like after you have done your research, you may have read more articles, yeah, some more articles, means that uh, the literature review or your reading uh, should not just stop until or after FYP1. So when you start your FYP2, uh, you start doing uh, research in the lab, you still need to uh, read, isn't it? So when you read new articles, then you have to uh, list down all the new articles, uh, citations, uh, especially when you discuss your results and those additional references you need to uh, add in your literature review. So it means that your literary, liter literature review in your uh, FYP thesis might be actually more than your FYP proposal. So literature review might change a little bit. Materials and methods, yes, because the structure how you write the materials and methods is different in proposal and in thesis. Okay, uh, so the, the reason why it's different is in proposal, whatever the, the methods you are proposing means that you, have done, you haven't done it yet. So the tense, you know the tense? Um, when we talk about English, the tense is 
should be future future tags. So in your methods for a proposal, when you say um, the protein will be quantified, you cannot say the protein was quantified because you haven't done it. So everything in the materials and methods for proposal should be in future tense. Okay. Uh, so after you have done the work in your FYP2, in the thesis, you should change the tense to past tense. Okay, so this is one of the mistakes that the students did. Uh, some of the students did yeah? when I uh, marked the thesis. They just, you know, they just take everything that they have written in their FYP proposal and put it in their FYP thesis without changing the tense. So that will be incorrect. Lah. So means that when the examiner mark it, so you'll get some deduction because we don't apply the right uh, techniques of writing um, materials and methods for thesis. Yes. So please take note. So whenever you write your uh, whenever you write your proposal and FYP thesis uh, next semester, please revise what I have uh, taught yeah? because what I've taught here is based on our experience uh, when we uh, mark the thesis. That's that's the common mistake that the student, the FYP students uh, did. Okay, please please revise your uh, notes. Eh? Okay, so that's material and methods. Okay, so in proposal we have we do not have results yet. Yeah, logically. So you have to think logically. Proposal you you haven't done the thing, so it must be future tense. There must be no results and, and unless you have preliminary results. But uh, for FYP, it's not compulsory to do that. Okay, so it's just for certain cases. Um, yeah, so you shouldn't you should not have any results yet because you haven't entered the lab. So there must be uh, after material and methods, there should be expected outcomes. And what you should expect from your proposal or from your research. So you should have that chapter expected outcomes and then research schedule. So how you want to plan for your work yeah, for uh, starting from uh, FYP1 and FYP2. So you have to start your uh, gun chart from normally we start semester one in October, right? So October 2022 uh, and then you put it like by months, yeah, October, November until June the following year. Uh, so what are the activities that you will do? So that one is you just plan up. Yeah, you don't have to be worried because you don't have to feel that you must do according to that. That is your plan. So if anything change, uh, at least you have a plan. Yeah. So that is the purpose of research schedule. And after that, we have references. Yeah, references for uh, the two documents are not um, different. I mean, like in terms of the format, it's going to be the same. Okay, how you uh, for FYP uh, the two formats. Um, the two formats um, allowed are APA and Harvard. Okay, so what's the difference of uh, the format? Uh, uh, the difference may be in terms of the way how you write the content, the details, like maybe some of the uh, the things should be italicized, for example, journal name. Okay, so things like that. So that's what you have uh, covered in research proposal. So uh, in today's topic, uh, we're going to cover module 7 only because I think it's going to be uh, lengthy if we proceed with uh, module 8. So module 8 is going to be next next class. Yeah. So module 7 is about um, writing a thesis. Okay. So this is after you have done research writing thesis. Uh, I don't go through the the lecture notes because I think it's going to be uh, a bit boring to go through uh, slide by slide. So uh, I would just extract the important points of the lecture notes. Okay, so you have to pay attention to what I teach here and jot down the notes. Uh, and this is going to be very useful for your uh, FYP next two semesters. Uh, and keep the notes. Don't don't just uh, write the notes. But keep the notes for your FYP. It's, it's not just for this course. It's not just for passing scientific communication, but it's also useful for your 
FYP next two semesters. Okay. All right. Uh, what is thesis? So the main topic here is thesis. Before this, it was proposal. And this topic is about thesis. So it's a it's, it's writing. We are still writing, but we are focusing on thesis. So what is a thesis? What is a thesis? Obviously, it's a document, same like proposal, it's a document, but the content is different. Okay, so. So, uh, by right, we should know it's a document. Okay. Uh, what? Why? Well, uh, not why. Uh, what it contains? It contains of a report, actually. Yeah, you can say a report. Of research. Okay, I just I just uh, jot down the things based on my uh, info, uh, based on my knowledge. You know, it, it sometimes you just have to refer to your notes uh, later and match what uh, you know what I write here. Okay, but it's actually the same thing. It's just the way how I understand and how I express the uh, meaning. Yeah? Uh, this is is basically a report of it must be of something, isn't it? Of research of a research. Remember when we talk about um, thesis research before this? Okay, there are many types of research, but not all of your research. Uh, you have to write a thesis at the end. So there are several uh, types of research that require thesis writing. Okay, so it's a report of research um, which are designed uh, to fulfill certain uh, requirements. Okay, for example, uh, we have FYP, right? FYP stands for final year project. Yeah, by right, you should know. And we also have MSc. So FYP is one of the requirements of bachelor's degree. Yeah, every every bachelor's degree, not just biotech. Uh, and the project, of course, it should be based on the field. Okay. Uh, so, it's one of the requirements of bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degree. You are doing bachelor's degree, right? You are still undergrad and undergrad. Uh, apart from that, another type of research is MSc research. MSc research. Um, MSc is actually divided into two, two types. It can be coursework. Coursework means uh, they are courses that you have to take, right? I mean, sim similar to undergrads. Uh, but at the end of the MSc, you have to, uh, in that coursework, you have to uh, take a small project, which is about similar to FYP as well. Uh, and normally, F MSc by coursework, we call it MSc by coursework. Uh, coursework. And then, okay, talking about coursework just now. So at the end of the coursework, you have to do like a small project, but they, they, they don't call it FYP anymore because it's maybe like project or something like small project, mini project, something like that. But uh, yeah, you, you also have to write a report at the end of that project. Okay. So another type of MSc is MSc by research. Okay. So just on coursework, it depends on classes, a lot of classes, exams. Yeah? Uh, that is uh, coursework. Uh, but MSc by research, uh, normally it's two years, and during that two years, you don't have to attend any uh, any exams. But what you have to do, you have to do research, so uh, um, full time research in the lab. Okay, uh, so MSc by research is actually uh, is is a lab. Uh, well, it's a research base. So at the end of the MS uh, the research uh, MSc, you have to write a thesis, same as FYP, same as MSc by password. Okay, so that's uh, the example of uh, the research. And then we have PhD, right? Uh, PhD, of course, is by research. Okay, normally it's by research, means um, it's much deeper than MSc by research. So if MSc by research, you spend two years for full time, uh, PhD by research, it will take four years. Uh, four years doing research in the lab, uh, not just in the lab, maybe doing research. So it means that the amount of work 
that you will do will be a lot for PhD, more than MSc. MSc is more than FYP, okay? Uh, so all of this, actually they are degree, isn't it? Degree. Degree is not just bachelor's degree. MSc degree is, is a type of degree, eh? PhD degree. So um, uh, why this is, uh, it's, it's a requirement of a degree, okay? It's not just a simple report. It's not basically a report. It's a special kind of report that, that are required for the confirmation of degrees. Confirmation is pen, pen yeah? So without submitting the, uh, the thesis for FYP, you cannot, you cannot graduate. You cannot be conferred a degree. Without submitting MSc uh, thesis also, you cannot, you cannot. So it's a requirement. So, uh, so that is actually the, uh, the actual definition of thesis. It's not just a simple report. It's, it's a special kind of report required for the uh, confirmation of degree. Okay, so uh, why and when? Okay. Why is, uh, I think I covered basically just now for the degree requirement. Uh, and then when, when you write it. So first it's um, after doing the research. Okay, so before you do the research, the document is not called thesis, it's called proposal. So when is after, uh, after the research is done. Okay, after the research is done. So the research can be FYP research, MSc research, PhD research. Um, Oh yeah, I forgot to mention uh, just now, one of the important uh, criteria of the thesis, so it's not just about report. When we say, when we talk about research, when we understand the actual meaning of research, it should be something that has a gap, isn't it? Yeah, remember, research must have a gap. A gap, yeah? So that is actually the difference between your work and uh, other works, okay, because you have something that has not been done by others. So talking about gap, it means that uh, the, the gap is actually that it finds a new research. So when we relate to thesis, uh, a thesis should have what we call novelties. Novelty. Novelty is uh, uh, singular, uh, plural is novelties. Novelties means something new, something novel. Novel is something novel, novel, new, something new. Okay, so it means that when, when you write a thesis, of course, you have done a research and you have a gap and your thesis shouldn't be the same with any other thesis. Uh, what I mean the same here is you must have a difference. Of course, there are similarities. For example, you, you might be using the same method the same uh, equipment, yeah, method, it doesn't matter. But what is actually the important is um, what is the, the key findings, the key findings, outcomes of the research. That is actually the point of a thesis, okay? Whenever I, I want to read any thesis, I want to find something, the, the lesson, something like the key points of the research. Okay, which is described by the novelty of the uh, of the research. Okay, I hope you understand what I mean. Okay, this is a very important. Without novelty, your thesis will be the same with maybe other other works, and it's it's not novel. Okay, novelty is a very important um, aspect in a research and also in a thesis. Okay, uh, why and when? Uh, it's a degree requirements after the research is done. Okay, I think that's it. That's some introduction of uh, the thesis. Yeah, by right, you should know what a thesis is. And then let's have a look at what are the structure of uh, a thesis. Okay, what is the structure of a thesis? Okay, here uh, I'm just talking about um, thesis in general. It means that FYP thesis, MSc, and PhD thesis it has the same structure. All of them have abstract, all of them have uh, all these, the chapters that I will introduce, okay? But it's just that what's the difference is the content. 
the content of FYP might not be that extensive, just like limited. Yeah. Uh, if you see the time frame, you can you can uh, evaluate from the time frame. FYP is just for six months, for example, or yeah, six months in the lab. Uh, MSc is two years. Yeah, you you could expect in two years more works will be done rather than a six month project. PhD four years is double the MSc, so more and more uh, works, and not just works. It means knowledge. Okay, because um, when we want to read any thesis, we want to get new knowledge. Yeah? Novelty that is, it's related to new knowledge. Okay, new knowledge. For example, if you investigate um, a new strain, strain, you know, strain is a um, uh, uh, one, you know, like how to define stream microorganism. We have genus, we have species, and not just and up to species, we have different types of species. So the every branch of it is called stream. Okay. Uh, so if let's say we you investigate a new strain, a new microbe, right? And then you study, you study, and then you found out that the microbe can produce uh, maybe new enzyme that can uh, reduce or degrade the contaminants in wastewater. So that is the new knowledge that people are looking for when they read your thesis. Okay. Um, yeah, so it means that for every level FYP, of course, it, there will be new knowledge, but it will differ in terms of the amount or the significant, the significance of the knowledge. Yeah? So, yeah, so that's the difference uh, between uh, the, the different levels of the degree. Just now, yeah? Okay, uh, so a thesis, any thesis should have, let's have a look at the main structure first. It should have a, an abstract, okay? This one is, abstract is actually a general uh, section for any document, not just thesis, not just proposal. Uh, if you see uh, any book also has an uh, abstract, right? And then uh, abstract is not considered as a chapter. It's, it's just a section. Okay? The first chapter is introduction. The second chapter is literature review. The third one is materials and methods. Um, the fourth chapter is results and discussion. Okay, for this chapter, um, sometimes there would uh, there is a format that split um, uh, the two parts because here we have results, we have discussion. So uh, some format they might have chapter four as results and chapter five as discussion. Okay. Uh, so both uh, ways, either you combine or you separate, both are fine. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, sometimes. Um, Maybe the requirement, maybe let's say the school uh, require the students to write chapter four results, chapter five discussion. Um, so the students have to follow that uh, format. Okay, but if let's say it's not stated, you can adopt any, yeah? any that is um, suitable for you. Uh, so personally, I would prefer uh, the combination of the two uh, sections, results and discussion, because it will be much easier and uh, it's, it's much easier to discuss results straight away after you present it. Um, so this, when we have split a section, means that you have to present all the results first. You know, like let's say you have uh, five subsections of results. You have to present all the results. You cannot discuss yet. Uh, in, the, in, in the following chapter, only then you discuss, like, Okay, uh, sub chapter, uh, the sub result one, why it is like that. Okay, normally this question is about why. Why? I mean, like um, the possible reasons. Of course, sometimes we might we might not have uh, the actual answer why, but we can discuss. Maybe we can relate with other words. So, so that's discussion. Um, yeah. So that's how it goes for uh, this this format. Okay. Uh, for if let's say we have two 
things combined together. The structure is like uh, we have results of uh, maybe section one, okay? result of section one. And then uh, once we present the results, we discuss, uh, which I think is much easier because it's, it's you know, you, your, uh, your focus will not be that maybe uh, tak lari lah. to me. Lah, eh? And then let's say section two, you have another, uh, another results, you have the results and then you discuss. So that is the nature for this uh, format. Okay, so you have result discuss, result discuss. So it's, um, it's um, yeah, so it's uh, that kind of pattern. Okay, All right. Uh, that's the fourth chapter. I'll go into in detail for that. Chapter five is conclusions and future work, or we also say recommendation, future recommendation. Okay. Uh, and this is not uh, same as chapter four and chapter five. These are not available in proposal because basically you don't have any results in right before you do the research. So that's why you don't have it in the proposal. Conclusion as well, you don't have it in proposal because you don't you don't have anything to conclude yet. Okay, conclusions are met based on the results. So uh, proposals shouldn't have conclusions. Okay. Uh, and the last section is references. Okay, this is the same for proposal. Uh, you must have references, list of references at the end of your uh, thesis. And also you sometimes, if let's say you have something uh, that you want to attach, but it might not be that really important, you can have a section. Uh, it's, not, it's not a chapter, it's a section only. Uh, appendices, okay? For example, maybe you want to uh, attach some pictures, additional pictures or data, raw data, just to, you know, like to show or to support your thesis, you can have this section, okay? But uh, it's not that compulsory. It's, it's, it depends on the needs. Okay, let's have a look at each of this uh, section. Abstract. Okay, what you should have in abstract um, okay so it's um the first section i think it's the same like uh, how i emphasize for a proposal it's a very important section because it's going to be the first section that will be read by the audience so it means that um means that you have to take care of it. I mean, everything you have to take care, but this is a very, is a first impression, it's a first impression. So it means you have to take note of what you write uh, and make sure that it consists of the points that the readers expect from your thesis, okay? And the structure will be different, okay? So please take note. You, uh, you cannot simply um, copy the abstract that you have written for your proposal for your uh, FYP thesis. So don't uh, copy, you have to edit it. Okay? So for the, uh, for, for the abstract of a thesis, what you should have, uh, the, the basic rule is the same. It should be around 300 words. Okay, that's uh, equivalent to uh, half of an A4 page, okay? Uh, one paragraph only, no two paragraph, one paragraph, yeah? And then no citation, no citation. You cannot cite anything because everything, it should be from your own words. No citation in abstract. So this is the basic rules for an abstract, uh, which is the same uh, as the proposal abstract. So what are the contents of an abstract for a thesis? So um, 
the first sentence. First uh, or second, sometimes you might need two sentences to introduce your subject matter. Okay, I can say one to two sentence um, should be on the uh, subject matter. What is meant by subject matter? You introduce a topic. You're talking about, for example, cellulase. You, you introduce cellulases are enzymes that you know, something like that. That is an introductory uh, statement. Uh, that is what I, I mean by um, introducing the subject matter. And then uh, the next sentences, uh, one or two sentences on problem statement. Okay, so you have re you might have written problem statements in introduction as well, but in the abstract, you have to uh, simplify it and make it into one or two sentences. OK, uh, so because you want to just like focus on uh, the, the main problem, something like that. OK, so uh, yeah, the first two sentences about subject matter, the next two sentences about problem statements. Um, then, of course, after you have introduced the problems, Right, uh, maybe you say that uh, information on this has not been studied yet, and yet this is crucial because um, maybe we need the enzyme for something like that. Okay, some, that, that is like to show the problem, yeah, to show the problem. So it must be followed by uh, objective. So that's how you, that's why you conduct the study, isn't it? So it should be followed by the next sentence, um, one sentence only, it should be on the aim and objective. Okay. Uh, and the way how you write the aim and objective in the abstract should be simplified as well. Everything should be simplified. Okay. Uh, so one sentences or one or two sentences. And then uh, one or two sentences on methods, methodology. OK, so this one also. Very brief means you, that you can say, uh, of course, you have a chapter of materials and methods, but you cannot write everything in the abstract. So uh, what you should emphasize in the abstract is how uh, the overview, the overview of the work. OK, for example, if let's say you, you have to see from uh, from a broader uh, perspective, how how is the work? Is it divided into how many stages? Uh, maybe you start first with isolation of the microbes and after that you characterize it and after that you maybe ferment, uh, use it for fermentation. Okay, so you, you have to see from a broader perspective. You cannot include everything because you only have one or two sentences, the limit. So how you write it, you can say uh, the work is divided into two main stages. Yeah? Uh, the first stage includes um, included the, and remember, please use past tense and methods. Um, the work include the first stage included uh, isolation of the microorganisms from uh, maybe Kota Samarahan, yeah, the area. Uh, and then uh, in the second stage, um, the, iso the isolates were characterized using what method you can you can mention the name of the method, but you just mention it briefly. Maybe you want to say uh, using whatever lah, the method uh, maybe is a special name. Also, you mention it briefly. Okay, that's it. Okay, uh, so you don't have to mention uh, absorbance will be measured. That one is not needed in the abstract. That one you have to uh, elaborate in the materials and methods section. Okay, so this one should be brief. And the way how you how you want to create that brief statement, you should understand your project very well. So that's how you can see your project uh, from a broader perspective. Yeah. Okay. Um, right after that, of course, it should be maybe two to three sentences. Uh, this one is a little bit more because uh, you have the results. So, so after you say that this is actually method is how, isn't it? is how you do it. 
Um, so after you explain that you do, you did the work, this and this, and then what you get, what you got, the results. So the results uh, show the show that. Uh, so for example, you can divide it into uh, whatever the, uh, two sections divided uh, based on whatever that you got. Okay, so the results show that uh, the isolates uh, were characterized as uh, RAM positive, yeah? something like that. So, and the way how you describe the results should also be brief, yeah, uh, because you have a, a limit of two to three sentences. Uh, so, how you describe it, you must understand your results first very well, and from there you can scheme. Okay, you 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 just highlight the significant thing about your results. You cannot mention everything. Okay, so you have to identify what is actually the key points of your results. Um, and also you can mention the values, whatever, but uh, make it, uh, you just select the significant values. Significant values means um, uh, the, the, the ultimate, um, nila, the ultimate message of the results. Uh, okay, the one is, uh, it requires skills, uh, it requires uh, your understanding as well. Okay? I'll show later uh, what are examples of uh, how to construct the sentences for all these um, parts. Eh? And then after results, um, we should have conclusion. Uh, conclusion. Uh, maybe one sentence, not much, one sentence, one sentence on uh, conclusion. So, uh, in general, uh, in summary, you can say the work has uh, proof that uh, maybe uh, the isolates, uh, the new isolates, the, it's like one sentence that sh that summarizes the results. Okay, uh, so it should be uh, you should state the the what do we? Take home message now of the research. Okay, uh, one sentence. I did this one sentence, or maybe two sentences also can, but depends on um, the length of the abstract that you have. Uh, do not exceed 300 words. And then, ideally, if you want to make it uh, make your abstract better or uh, uh, excellent, I can say. Yeah? So this is. Uh, Another sentence is on the general implication. General implication of the research. Okay, of course, when you say conclusion, you are kind of like summarizing the key findings based on the objectives that you have set. Of course, you have objective, right? So you you conclude whether you achieve or not your objective. Does it uh, fulfill or not? But when we talk about general implication, uh, it means that what is the significance of your research uh, from a broader perspective? Means if let's say you are, your research is about um, using uh, banana waste as a substrate for producing uh, bioethanol, okay? And you have focused on certain, uh, certain uh, parameters. So the general implication of it is uh, since you are talking about uh, bioethanol, okay? So it means that your study here will contribute new knowledge in the field of biofuel. Ethanol is a biofuel, isn't it? Uh, biofuel. And while it, why it is important? Because it's a renewable energy, isn't it? So this work, you can say like uh, some examples are like, this work gives useful insights into um, the exploration of uh, uh, agriculture waste as substrates for production of renewable energy. Uh, so you can see that it's, it's very, um, you know, it's from a broader perspective. You're not just focusing on your work, but you are looking from the importance of bioethanol to the bigger field, which is fuel. Fuel is an energy and biofuel is a sustainable or renewable energy, isn't it? Uh, so that's the importance. So that is that is meant by general implication, okay. Um, yeah. So I would say if you have that sentence, the last sentence of general implication, uh, 
it will be excellent. But sometimes some of the abstract, they just end up uh, until uh, conclusion, which is still uh, okay, which is still okay. Uh, but if you have uh, the last sentence of uh, implication, that one is a bonus, lah. it's a bonus, and it will be, it will make your abstract excellent. Okay, all right. So you can see that the limit of uh, every point, uh, so all of these are the points that we should have. So that's how you construct an abstract for a thesis. It means that you cannot just uh, write whatever you want to write, okay? It must be based on you have you have introduced or not your subject matter. You have stated or not your problem statement, objective, the aim of the objective. So from here, if let's say, uh, imagine you are the readers, the readers of any thesis, okay? So you can understand the structure of the, uh, the research done rather than if let's say you don't have, eh? Oh, it's lost. Mm. Rather than if let's say you you don't have uh, this rule of thumb of the abstract, you write blindly, so it will be not organized. Okay, remember research is an organized process. So organize. Uh, system process. Huh? Okay, that's abstract. And you can see it's different from proposal because proposal doesn't have uh, results, doesn't have conclusion. Instead, they have expected outcomes, right, after the methodology. Uh, introduction. Uh, introduction might not be that really different, I can say. Um, the key points of an introduction, it should be now is uh, you can see that every session it also have the components in the abstract, but in a uh, much lengthier way. Okay, for example, introduction you have the general statement, but here you write in maybe one or one to two paragraphs, so it means that it's uh, longer, isn't it? So after that you have the problem statement from statements, but in a much lengthier way than in the abstract. So this one is about one to two paragraphs as well. And here you have to cite, okay? Uh, I have, I got questions. Uh, uh, questions from one of you asking whether citation is needed or not. After abstract citation is a must. Okay, it's only abstract that doesn't have citation, remember. Okay, logically, everything else after this, when you cite, when you refer to other sources, you have to cite. Otherwise, you'll you'll consider it as plagiarizing. Why abstract doesn't need uh, citation? Because all of the things here, it should be from yourself, like problem statements. Um, although it's based on, uh, you know, like it's, it's actually based on your observation about other words. So you, you identify that this is lacking, this is not yet studied, this is needed. So it actually should be your own words. So that's why um, that's why you don't need to cite. And the subject matter, some of the general statement does not need citation. For example, um, if let's say we say that bioethanol is a renewable fuel which can um, replace the synthetic fuel. It's a, something that everyone understood. Right, so it doesn't need citation. So that's why uh, for the general statements in the abstract, you don't need citation. Uh, aim and objective. It must be based on your own words, right? You want to say that this work focuses on what? This and this. So it's your own words. Methodology. You you are talking, you're just talking about brief uh, picture about the methods. So it doesn't need citation. So you can say that your work is divided into this and this. You don't need to cite, isn't it? Results. The results are your results, new results. It's not based on other results. So you don't need citation. Conclusion, your own words, your own view, opinion about your results. Yeah? So it's on your own words. And same goes to the implication. It should be your own words. So that's the rationale why abstract does not need citation. 
but in other chapters, introduction, literature review, material and methods, results and discussion, uh, and even conclusion, conclusion may, may not, uh, may, may, may have less citation, but the rest you should cite because they are going to base your research, right? I mean, you're going to compare and you're going to use some facts from others. So you have to cite, okay? So that's the logic, yeah, logic. So sometimes uh, you have to also uh, think the, the, the logic of it. Lah, eh? For example, thesis, methods, you have done the things. So of course you have, you have to use past tense, not future tense. Proposal, the things have not been done yet. The, method, the methods, I'm talking about methods. Huh? So the methods should be future tense, okay? Um, all right, Roman statements, one or two paragraphs. I think this is quite similar to proposal. Doesn't differ that much. And then you should have, okay, after the logic, after you say the problem, of course you want to say the aim of uh, an objective of your research, how you want to solve the problems. So you should have, Aim and objective. Okay, so that's um, that's going to be I think one paragraph, and the length of chapter one or introduction um, is about three to four pages, or maybe two to three, three pages lah, three pages minimum I can say, three to four pages eh, for FYP, because FYP is uh, not that really long, four five pages or five pages. Yeah. And sometimes it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality of the content. Okay. And please remember, uh, any introduction chapter should end with the objective. Okay. And sometimes you can also insert um, hypothesis. Uh, but it depends also that sometimes you can, uh, you can mention hypothesis indirectly. Um, yeah, it depends on depends on uh, yeah, maybe it's it's good to have the hypothesis, but sometimes it might not be that really compulsory. Okay. Um chapter two, literature review. Okay. Uh I think it's about the same as well to the proposal. You is a chapter where you gather all the um uh, uh all the comparison uh of what you have read, okay? It's, that's why it's called review. Literature means from the past. Yeah? Literature means the articles that you have read. Uh, so in this chapter, you are going to uh, discuss, not discuss, but it's, uh, it's, you're going to present what you have read actually. And uh, the same practice uh, like proposal, okay? I think I've mentioned about divide into sub chapter. This is very important divide into sub chapters means uh, you have to understand your topics very well. So for example, if you are talking about uh, bioethanol uh, production from banana waste by uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, okay? Let's uh, have a look at it. Bioethanol production from uh, banana Waste by uh, Saccharomyces Saccharomyces Cerevisiae. Okay, let's say this is your topic. So you have to chunk your topic into subtopics. What I mean by chunks here, you have to know it's it's met from different subtopics. Actually, you have bioethanol, then you have. Uh, you have uh, banana waste, and then you have another one is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So this is how you can divide it into subchapters. Maybe you put it first bioethanol. Okay, let's say what I mean by subchapters here is, let's say this is chapter two, two point one is about bioethanol, all about bioethanol. What, uh, what starting from the definition, and then what are the research that has been done on bioethanol. Previous works, what are the differences, similarities, things like that. So you're going to put it under this topic, subchapter. And then 2.2, .2, you may talk about banana waste. Uh, 
So banana waste, what kinds of waste? How many types of banana waste? Yeah? Uh, and what are the works that have been done using banana waste? Uh, things like that. Okay. And then you may talk about this is just an example. Okay, a very a simple example. Uh, service A. Yeah. You may have. It's not just about this. You may have maybe other. Uh, sub, re relevant subtopics. Maybe you can say fermentation methods because you are going to use fermentation um, for producing it. So fermentation techniques. Okay. Um, so it depends lah. Depends on how you understand your topic. Okay. And but creating the subchapter is very important. Um, okay. And then what else important here? Uh, you can present. You may uh, use tables, tables to uh, compare and contrast. Okay, so what I meant by this is, let's have a look at an example. Okay, for example, here. This is an example of uh, a table in literature review. Uh, and this is uh, this is from my uh, PhD thesis. Uh, and I I created this table based on my uh, reading. Okay, means that I have read all of this. This one, yeah? this one, all of this I have read, and then I want to see it how it compares to each other right maybe this is about um value added products from visceral because my research was on visceral uh so i want to see what are the products produced from visceral so it's much easier for the readers to uh, see this table rather than if i write paragraphs uh, i can also write paragraph like okay um Production of one three propendyl was reported uh, by uh, higher mark and this and this, right? But if I, I put it in a paragraph, it's going to be lengthier and it's very difficult to see rather than if we see we have this kind of table. So it means that once you have read, you have you can summarize your readings, the main points into a table. So how you construct the table, it depends on your understanding. Is about what, okay, and what you want to compare. For example, here I want to compare uh, different products and different microorganisms. And of course, you have to put this last section reference. Okay, so this is uh, what I meant by you can create a table in your literature review. So it's not just about paragraphs. Yeah. Okay. okay. May use tables to compare and contrast. And also, you can not just uh, have a tables. You can create um, the figures. Yeah? You can you can create your figures based on your understanding as well. Figures can include so figures you can create by your own, or you can actually get it from other sources. But uh, there are procedures. Uh, if let's say you want to use uh, figures from articles because you cannot simply use uh, any figures or printed materials uh, without permission. So the right way of actually uh, using any figures from articles, if you want to put it in your document, you have to uh, write, uh, write, a, uh, write a letter, uh, a permission or email asking for permission. That is the actual procedure, but uh, quite a lot of students did not do that, okay? But that's what you should know, actually, um, because those materials are copyrighted materials. The articles are copyrighted, so you cannot use. Uh, when people find that you have used without permission, uh, people can sue you. Yeah, uh, so that is uh, the low thing, lah. But how you want to, let's say, apart from it, what are other options? Other options is you can redraw. You can redraw means that let's say, um, yeah, you can redraw based on the picture. Let's say the diagram is about, 
um, maybe the structure of uh, the yeast or something like that. Okay, uh, you have the reference. You have to redraw by yourself, or maybe it's about uh, chemical structure. Chemical structure is a bit easier, right, to produce. You, there must be uh, certain tools that you can reproduce. Yeah? So uh, what you have to do, you have to redraw. This one you have to redraw. We call it redraw or reproduce. Or uh, if you want to use the actual one, you have to ask permission. Uh, ask for permission from the journal or the publisher. Okay, that's the right way how you want to include figures in your uh, thesis. And for the figures, uh, for the reproduced figures, me. So examples, huh? I would like to keep an example. Okay, see this one. This is a figure that I got from uh, uh, Abby Sugar. Abby Sugar here is a is organization. It's a company. Uh, so I have asked a permission from Abby Sugar to use this figure because this figure it belongs to them. So you can see the last statement reproduce with permission from Abby Sugar. Okay, uh, so without permission, you cannot use the figure. So another example is okay, this one, this one I created by my own. Means that let's say I understand the process and I want to put it into figures in order to make it much easier for the readers to understand. Then I create myself the flow chart. Okay. It is actually a simple flow chart. Uh, so this one I created by myself, so I don't have to in, to mention anything. Uh, I would just say that this is a diagram showing this and this, right? So it's, it's by myself. Another way of, um, when I said just now reproduce or redraw, uh, an example of it is uh, this one, okay? So this one is is actually a chemical reaction. Uh, is is actually the same thing. I just reproduce means that uh, this is what I uh, got from an article, but I don't copy and paste that figure. I construct again, reconstruct again using Microsoft PowerPoint. Put you know like draw one by one, visceral type, and then put arrow and put this box. Maybe a little bit you change a little bit lah. Uh, but the content is the same. Everything here is the same. Uh, all this information and uh, I, I draw it that, that what is meant by reproduce or redraw uh, you have to redraw it uh, and uh, how you can say okay maybe this one the caption will uh, you edit a little bit but I mean it's best on your understanding yeah like this one is metabolic me okay this is the details but what I would like to emphasize here is this statement adapted from uh, whatever the source, the reference. So the word adapted here, it means that you are not copying and pasting. You are reproducing uh, it. Okay, adapted from. Huh? So it means you, you based on this reference, you reproduce this figure. Um, so that is the right, the actual way of putting the figures. But I noticed that um, uh, some of some may not be concerned with that, okay. But please do not uh, practice the wrong way, lah. You cannot copy and paste actually, okay. Um, yeah. So in Malaysia, maybe it's not that really strict. But if you go to some countries who are very, which are very particular about uh, copyright things, once they see you copying and pasting the materials, copyrighted materials, you can be sued. Yeah. So don't practice that. I don't practice that. Yes, it's not safe. In Malaysia, maybe you are safe, but if let's say you go to somewhere else and you feel that there's nothing wrong with your practice and you practice the same thing and then suddenly people found and they can sue you. Okay. Okay, so that's about figures and uh, tables. Okay, the, the, uh, okay, another thing is about literary, literary review. It's not... Um, when you say literature review, uh, one of the biggest mistakes, uh, not just undergrads, but also postgraduates, uh, they just present the things They're like, okay, this and this, uh, um, Smith et al. reported that um, bioethanol can be produced by this and this. But one important point or aspects that you should have is what we call critical uh, appraisal. 
So what is this? Critical appraisal. So this kind of thing you have to take note. Uh, that's why I say keep the notes that you have for this course. Critical appraisal means you have, okay, let's say of course, literature review are based on your readings of many articles. And of course you have to say that he's reported this, this reported that, this reported this, but you should also come up with your observation, opinion. This is your own words. This is your own um, judgment, okay? So if let's say author, this author said this, this author said that, this author said this, so what? So, so what? What is your opinion about it? So in order for you to come up with the opinion, you have to understand current the topics. You cannot just read like that, you know? So uh, that is the, the ideal way of uh, writing this, this uh, chapter. And I know it's not easy. It's not easy. Critical appraisal, uh, making a critical appraisal is not easy, but it needs skill. It, you have to train yourself. And this is always the lacking part of any uh, student's writing. Okay. So if someone comes up with this, uh, I would know that he understands or he or she understands the topics thoroughly and he knows uh, the role of the literature. Unit. This is actually uh, the the key, the key point of literature review, the key point of literature review, critical appraisal, call it. So let's uh, see an example of it. Huh? So I'm trying to uh, to expose you guys with the actual uh, things that uh, a scientific writing should have. Okay, uh, not not the typical way. I know that if you just write typically, you can also pass FYP. But uh, I feel obliged to not to you know. Uh, if let's say I start some the right uh, message. Huh? Which are there? Examples of critical appraisal. So at least you uh, you you try and you keep in your mind. Okay, if um for FYP, let's say you proceed with master uh, after your FYP, FYP uh, after, sorry, after your degree, then you must uh, remember what I said here. Yeah. Critical appraisal is one part of the literature review. Speed up, speed up, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. What what is the example of it? Huh? If you see here, well, various studies related to the use of uh, whatever lah. Uh, it's about from the subject matter here. Um. So this is actually based on if you want to imagine, this is based on what I have read, what I have discovered. I I've, I've seen that many reports, many many articles talk about uh, this, uh, this subject like HTTP microvectors. And then what is my observation? What is my opinion? Okay, so this is this is actually the, the, crit the, the critical appraisal part. There remains a need to understand. Okay, it means that I found out this one, this thing, these two factors have not been talked about by those previous articles. Uh, so that is my opinion. You can see it's, it's not, I don't have to cite because it's not from others, it's from myself. A number of words have highlighted the use of whatsoever. Uh, nonetheless, the absence of any uh, or key. Uh, yeah, things like that. So basically, um, in, in a simpler words, I can say it's, it's your observation of what is lacking. Okay, what is lacking and what is lacking in previous studies. So if you, it's hard for you to think about uh, the terms, critical appraisal, it's like what is lacking from previous works that what are not addressed. So that is actually, you should uh, identify okay. um, something like that. Lah. Uh, yeah, see, for example, another sentence. Huh? 
the few studies that have addressed the okay, this is best on my reading. This is best on my reading. But the challenge here lies in understanding it. So this is another way of saying that this thing is not addressed in previous studies. Okay, so basically it's, it's about like that, lah, physical appraisal. It's not in the notes, yet, but I think that's what you should know. Key points about uh, the limitation of previous words or your other opinions. Okay. So this is actually the very important part of literature review. Okay. You need a break? No, I'm just going to fight it. Oh, yeah, break me. The match. <laughs> that's why that's why you all need. Mom, that so far. Could I check a dinding me? At least I just run out. Reply. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Anything that you don't understand the terms, concept? Okay. Okay, materials and methods. I sambung je lah Materials and methods. Uh, okay, as I said just now, the difference between this section with others, with the proposal is the tense. Tense, kan? Must be past tense. Okay, ni tulis tau. Nanti ada juga yang buat proposal. Uh, Copy the proposal nanti. <laughs> so past tense, you should change. Yeah? Maybe the, the things are the same, but you just change the tense. Lah, senang je. Will, jadi, uh, you know, it, it should be macam ni lah. It should be, let me give an example of the thesis. Okay, this is materials and methods. Okay, uh, one, I don't know what, siapa uh, ada, tapi, when we check the FYP thesis, there are some students yang akan list, uh, list down materials. What's the methods? Uh, actually, this chapter, although it names as materials and methods, kalau you understand it literally, you would say, oh, you have material first and then you have methods after that. But it's actually, it's a merge, a merge chapter. Means that, this is my opinion, I don't know about other lecturers, uh, you don't have to put like list of materials. Uh, this is what I always found out from some of the students uh, when I mark the thesis. They would say, they would have this uh, 3.1 list of materials. I mean, this is this is a thesis. You don't have to put like it's tak berapa bagi I tak berapa uh, agree lah with this format. I don't know about other lecturers. Eh? But if you've got me as your examiner, I will ask you to write in paragraph. And this is if this is uh, not accepted for me. Okay, so what is meant by this chapter? It's the merge chapter. What is what is meant by merge? Like it, when you say the methods, of course you should you would say about the materials, right? Uh, so tak payahlah you list down list of materials and then three point two baru methods, which is uh to me it's not um. It's not that really accepted lah to me. Eh? So this chapter, you should start directly with your, let's say you know your your methods, okay? Uh, maybe first you start with the eat microorganism. Uh, the the, uh, the format is always like that. You will start with your microorganism because uh, biotech, of course, you use, uh, or not microorganism, organisms, lah, whatever lah. If you are using plant at the point me, animal culture, you have organisms. You you must have the information about it. Okay. So and then 3.2, it should be maybe sam sampling, something like that. So it just go directly to your every step of your work. Yeah. And the way how you organize the chapter, it should be uh from from the first point, yeah? for example, microorganism. And then you, follow you got isolation. Maybe you have to go to sampling, right? So where's your sampling? So next location. Uh, maybe the method of sampling, right? Uh, method of sampling, things like that, lah. Okay, and then 
you divide into subchapters as well. Okay, so means here uh, you have to use past tense. That's the first thing, and the second thing is you have to use uh, you have to divide into subchapters. Subchapters here, remember, is the breakdown 3.1, 3.2. You cannot put in one lump sum uh, paragraph. Yeah? Divide into subchapters 3.1, 3.2. Uh, maybe uh, 3.3. Sometimes uh, you may have, you may need to uh, have another, you know, sub subchapters again. 3.1 point, uh, 3 3.3.1, 3.3.2 depends on the needs. Yeah. Uh, so you you just go directly to your to the to the methods lah, maknanya. So but in the methods we would talk about the materials that you you use. Okay, so you don't have to list of materials, satu, 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 all the chemicals. Macam uh, tak ni lah, it's not that really tak uh, berapa professional lah bagi saya. Uh, so, examples, let me give you an example. Okay, I think I have, I have posted a sample of FYP proposal, okay? So, you can have a look, eh? So, this one is a proposal, okay? We're going to uh, future tense. This one and will be obtained. Uh, see, I I forgot to emphasize this last week. So this is proposal. So that's why you see it's all uh, future tense. Yeah? Will be checked. Will be placed. Will be harvested. So if let's say you talk about thesis, thesis means you have done the work. So it means you use past tense. Yeah? For example, uh, this is uh, how I divide it. Okay, this one is because of uh, my this is, um, I don't remind about it for, for your FYP is chapter three lah, until FYP. Eh? Uh, so you would have sub chapters 2.1, uh, 3.2. Okay. Uh, so here, materials need, uh, yeah, need, this is not what I meant just now. The, uh, need materials need is just to mention uh, the origin of the, I mean, like the brands. Uh, what I uh, refer just now when it, when I say list of materials the student um, mentioned, they letak satu satu the chemical sodium chloride, whatever lah ethanol. Yeah, uh, it's, that's not what I expect. Okay, uh, this one this one is lain lah maksudnya. I mean it, this is not what I meant just now. Eh? Uh, this is to mention the brands and also because I'm using uh, uh, this uh, this sample this this kind of uh, biomass. Uh, so I have to mention where it is from. Okay. Uh, same as if let's say you uh, use, for example, banana waste or you use sago waste, you have to also mention where you take it from. Okay. The name of the company that provides it or maybe the place and when you sample. Okay. So uh, the next part here is media preparation. Okay. See, so when I talk about media preparation, of course, I'm talking about all the chemicals, so that's why you don't need the list of chemicals for all everything. Uh, so that's any media preparation. How I prepare the maybe synthetic media. Uh, so uh, I prepare this and this, and I, I would mention the the media consisted of all of this. So I don't need the list of materials, independent list of materials, right? Uh, so this is what I meant by uh, it merged together the method and the uh, materials. Yeah. So you can also include tables. If let's say you want to make it much clearer, okay, what are the components of the, uh, maybe the media, you can construct your own table. Okay, like for example, this one, table. And then this is, um, yeah, this is, this is, I think it will be important for flowchart, flowchart of your work. This one you can include as well. And for your presentation, uh, oral presentation, you need it because you want to, Tell people how it looks like uh, the picture of your work in general. Okay, uh, for example, you can also construct flowchart. Jangan takut untuk construct flowchart because you understand your work. You should see it how how to make it easier for others to understand. Okay, uh, flowchart you create box, you know? So each of this is a process, isn't it? So from first step is this. First, second step is that uh, you construct your own flowchart. Okay. Uh, that one is much easier for the audience to understand. Here you can also construct flowchart. Okay, the rest are the same. Lah. It depends on your work. Yeah. So, 
So what I also want to emphasize here is, okay, you use plus that, uh, the scientific units. Okay, scientific units are the more attorney. Uh, that one is you have to know the right uh, way of writing the units, okay? And especially if in if it involves, what is this? Superscript, isn't it? Superscript. Yang kuasa tu. Like uh, gram per liter. Or if let's say you have the chemical formula, for example, the chemicals here. This is subscript, isn't it? The one... Dekat bawah. How to say that? Subscript. This one. KH2PO4. Contohnya. Okay. Uh, so, please, please mind this subscript and superscript. Okay. You cannot write this one. Uh, KH2PO4. Uh, ni selalu student buat. And this is the mistakes lah. Because we are in science. We are in science. We should practice the right uh, scientific uh, technique. Okay, uh, you have learned chemistry. Yeah, I mean, this is wrong. Okay, KH two P O four. Kena buat satu satu lah subscript tu memang lah leceh. Tapi that's your role. That's your that's your task. Huh? I kena buat satu satu sana ya. Unless you find a uh, tools tools lah for you to write it easily. Tapi hmm, tak tahu lah ada ke tak. Tapi kalau tak jumpa buat lah manual. Okay. Highlight lah, tu tu letak lah, super, uh, subscript. Well, let's say just now, gram per liter, kan? Uh, this one, uh, you have to know lah, this one is sub, subscript. Okay, you have to learn lots of uh, terminologies. This one is superscript. Superscript. Man, uh, semua ada dalam words kan? How you change it. Okay, uh, so ni yang one of the mistakes in uh, this chapter, the students do not apply the right uh, formula of uh, chemical formulas and units. Yes. Okay, that one, apa lagi? I emphasize apa yang penting lah, apa yang I rasa uh, the common mistakes that the students did during the uh, FYP. Okay, now here. You can also, uh, need, because this one is thesis, you have done the work. Of course, you have some pictures from the lab. Uh, let's say your project is about um, other set up certain two, right? Other certain setups of your experiment, maybe, you know, that you want to show to your uh, examiners or readers. So you can set the picture of your um, System lah, uh, tapi tak semua juga perlu diambil gambar. Uh, it's like maybe if you are developing techniques ke and you need to show the picture of your setup, you may take the picture. Okay, you can you can put it this way. Like for example, my work last time was involved uh, involved this rector. So I put uh, I I set the picture and then I put it in my thesis and I label it. Label is important so that people know what what is what. Okay, you can also include pictures. Or like this. Uh, what else? In some of it now. Yeah. Another one is you can also include equation. Depends on the needs lah. If let's say your uh, method involves certain equation, you have to uh, write the equation, label it. This is uh, equation uh, one. Maybe equation depends on the order. Okay. So like you can think the long chapter me. Is it? I think mm. maybe you want to take some pictures of your culture. You can also uh, take a picture. So uh, during your FYP two, please be ready to snap pictures. Like uh, those pictures are important for your uh, thesis and for your presentation. Okay. The rest is. Let's go back to me. Yeah, that's all about the materials and methods. Uh, chapter 4, Results and Discussion. Okay, I've mentioned that there are two formats. Either you merge the two cons uh, the two topics, Results and Discussion, or sometimes it can be Chapter 4, Results, Chapter 5, Discussion. But FYP, we just uh, ask you to merge yeah? Results and Discussion. Okay, so what this topic is all about? So you should have two things. Two things, okay? Results and Discussion. But the common mistakes that the student did 
they just put the results and there's no discussion. Ah, uh, yang sah that's lalu. Ah, student buat. Okay, so what kind of result? Because sometimes you are just like overwhelmed with, with the results. You just say this and this and this, but you forgot to discuss. So uh, the right way it should be. You present the results. Okay, and first okay, the key thing here. Um, divide into sub chapters again. Yeah, you can see that in previous chapters also I mentioned about sub chapters because it's very important to have sub chapters. Otherwise, it's very you will be lost yeah, the, uh, with the piles of uh, data that you have. Divide into sub chapters means you must know that your work maybe is divided into few stages. So you discuss or uh, you present the things in stages as well. Okay. Uh, so you should know like okay, 4.1 is about maybe like for 4.2 maybe it's about isolation first. Depends lah. 4.2 is about what? So you should know your project and that's how you can divide into sub chapters. Could be 4.3. Depends on the needs 4.4. So for every sub chapters, this is what you should write. So means you have to say okay this uh what is done you should say i mean like the, the paragraph you should say what is done what is done means that isolation was performed uh in order to briefly lah walaupun you dah cakap the objective before but you want to say the isolation was performed in order to uh select potential microorganisms yeah and so tapi tak but, don't write it too uh, long because you have mentioned all the methods in the previous chapter, isn't it? So just one or two statements saying the introduction. And then you would say the results. Then you say about your results. The results show that blah, blah, blah. Okay. So it means that's your results. You have to present your results. And how you present your results, it depends on your nature of work. Um, some of the results may need results. It can be presented in the form of graphs. If it is a quantitative data, it can also be in the form of pictures. If uh, let's say you want to talk about the morphology, you have to snap the pictures under the microscope. It can also be uh, maybe uh, if you are using uh, gel, gel analysis, you would have the bands. It, it depends on the nature of your work. Or maybe sometimes uh, I'll put it again. Uh, graphs, table, it depends. Uh, okay, so this is how you present the data. The data, uh, the results show that. Okay, you have to describe your result as well. So let's say it's about the graph. Uh, it's increasing. I mean, how you how you describe it? For example, if let's say the graph is like this, uh, don't talk about every point. Of course, you have let's say every point. You, you don't have to. Once you have the results, you present the graph, and when you say when you say in paragraph in words, you have to say that the results are in figure one shows uh, so and so. The trend is increasing, for example, right? Uh, you don't have to mention that uh, at this point is three point one. Uh, the next point is four point two. The next point is five, and the next point is six. Because you want to describe this one, so you just. See from your observation how it looks like. Is it increasing? At which point? What is the maximum? Okay, what is important? Huh? Significant trend. Significant trend of the result. What is the highest? The lowest? When? Something like that. How much? Okay. Um, how much? So that is meant by the significant trends. How much? Uh, when? What? Okay. Uh, so. Not every single point. Single things. And the same thing goes to pictures, gel, or whatever the results that you have. Identify first. You have to analyze first your results. See what is actually the message of the picture, the morphology. Uh, maybe you say that overall the structure looks like upper. So you have to have that skill of analyzing your results okay so that's the thing that uh, is expected from fyp the skill to analyze the results so that is results we're not talking about discussion yet so once you have the results 
Okay, you have mentioned you got this and this. So it comes the discussion. So the discussion part, you should say. You what what is meant by discussion is um, discussion is when you talk about the possible reason possible reasons uh, of your results. Okay, maybe you want to say why the trend is increasing. You, how to know the answer? You have to read. You have to relate with other works that maybe have the same uh, area and you can use their points, but don't forget to cite. Yeah? Uh, so, and you also can compare with previous words or maybe uh, previous words use certain substrate and you are using different substrates, but maybe the microbes is the same or the product is the same. Uh, so you have to compare with them. So uh, how the comparison? So that's discussion should have. That's what discussion should have. Yeah? So uh, that is the thing that you have to apply. Results, you discuss. Results, discuss. Yeah? So this is what you have to do for every subchapter. What I mean here is like I'm just giving an example what you have to do for every subchapter. Okay. Uh, okay, that's results and discussion. Chapter five conclusions and future work. Mm. So conclusions. So this one must tally with your objective. With your objective. Logically, like I logically, you say that you want to do this, this, and this. So at the end, of course, like you want to see, have you achieved what you have done, what you have talked about? Yeah, so that. So it must tell you with the objectives. So when I check this chapter, I would go back to the introduction. Is it tell you or not? Sometimes the students they forgot what they have written in the introduction chapter where they state the objectives. They say that they have two objectives, for example, but sometimes they just describe the conclusion for one objective. They forgot about the second objective. So whenever you call, you write this chapter, you have to know back, revise back the objective. You have achieved or not the objective. So this is what I mean by must tell you. So if let's say you have two objectives, you must have conclusion for that two objectives. So how you divide it? Okay, now uh, this chapter, it has conclusion and future work recommendation so there are two two components okay so you may divide 5.1 conclusions okay and uh 5.2 uh future work okay, let's talk about conclusion first uh so uh, for conclusions so identify your objective how many objectives two objectives so let's say you have to uh, write one paragraph concluding uh, chap uh, objective one, okay, and then another paragraph objective two. Okay, divide it. Uh, don't write a long paragraph. What is meant? By, what I mean by the long paragraph is you have a full page. You start writing without any paragraph. It's just one paragraph. So what uh, what is ideal is you divide it into two or maybe three depends on your objective. Okay, uh, so it's clear for the readers. Okay, so this is objective one, this is objective two, something like that. So what you have to write, go back to your objective. Let's say your objective is to investigate the effect of pH on bioethanol fermentation. So what's the conclusion? What's the results? So your results say this and this. So what's your conclusion? So you must have the skill of concluding the work, the research or the results. Okay. Uh, so you must study lah, fulfill that. So second objective. So you go one by one. So that's the conclusions. And normally I would say no citation is needed here because you are talking about your own work. Okay. Normally I would say no citation. Okay, that's how you create the conclusions. Future work, how to know uh, what to write for your future work or recommendation. So after you have done research in the lab, you would actually have reflection. Means that uh, when you do the lab, uh, when you do the research, 
you will realize that, oh, I cannot do this. I, I mean, like there are things that I should improve, but I cannot do it because of the time frame. I don't have much time, but if let's say I have enough time, I can maybe improve on this part. Okay, that is kind of a reflection. So this is like a reflection. Okay, uh, so if you if you do your research, you focus on your research, you understand your research, uh, you would have that uh, reflection. You would have at least one or two ideas how you can improve your work. What else that you can do? Let's say, yeah. So that that's kind of things that you should write under future work. Okay. So this one, uh, maybe two paragraphs, two points, at least like two points, eh? Oh, tak ada banyak sangat. Tapi at least ada point. Let's say two points. Okay. First, you want to say that you want to improve in terms of upper. So another thing, maybe you can say that some parameters should also be studied in order to understand. Uh, the behavior of the microbes better, things like that. So it's, it's your opinion. So basically, it's your opinion uh, about the work. Your opinion uh, on limitation or improvement that should be made. Limitation and improvement. That should be done. Okay. In the future. That's why it's called future work. Okay, that's chapter five. References is the same lah. Uh, APA or Harvard. Okay, and uh, you have to know the, uh, the the format. Okay, and what is important for references is uh, standardization. Standardization. What is meant by standardization? I give you one example. Eh? Contohnya, references. Okay. I don't know. I'm not sure this one is APA ke uh, Harvard. But what is meant by standardization? If let's say uh, the format says that, you see this one, uh, this one is, you have to identify this is the name of authors, right? Okay. If you see here, it use N. So the rest should be N as well. I'm sorry. That's one example. This is author's name. Another one is uh, you have to look at year. The year must be in bracket. So every article that I mean must be other year in bracket as well. Sometimes what is uh, not standardized, some references, the year is in bracket. Some, the year are not in bracket. Okay, so that's not standardized. What else? Uh, the next one, you, you should examine every, although you, you use uh, Mendeley or whatever the reference manager, but sometimes uh, uh, the, the details are not included properly. So there might be some flaws in the details. So you should go through the list again. Okay. Uh, for example, this one is the name of the, the name of the article. And if you see, uh, this one is, of course, is a, uh, Capital letter. Uh, so for the rest is lower case. So means that you're going to make sure uh, the rest of your list. Okay. For example, here. Summer again. I mean, it, it means that ev uh, everything else after the words must be lower case. So some of the, uh, some of the mistakes. Contohnya, uh, ini memang Everything here is lower case, kan? Lower case, lower case. Tapi dekat uh, article line, you write uh, title case like this. Uh, so that one is uh, not standardized, lah. Yeah. So example of uh, non-standardized things. Okay. Another thing, journal's name. So this one, if you see after the title, is journal name. Journal name, yeah. So if you see here, this is written in full. Written in full name. What is what I mean here is like is uh, not abbreviated lah. Journal of this uh, satu. So you should make sure as well in all the articles that you have uh, in the following list, everything must be in um, full name as well. 
So some some sometimes you may have the uh, information dalam bentuk abbreviated because this one is sometimes the uh, the journals they abbreviate abbreviate tau tak uh, sing, uh, singkatan eh? contohnya journal of the institute of brewing sometimes it is uh, abbreviated as journal of i don't know institute maybe like institute brewing something like that so if you if you come across this one you have to put it into full text lah. and sometimes the manually ada juga flows so you have to check so, so if let's say you you come you are provided this how you how you want to know uh, the full name you just google just google and then uh, definitely you are the full name and you have to write the full name and you have to make sure that all the uh, journal name ni semua full name uh, bukan abbreviated uh, bukan not abbreviated and also it should be item size uh, yeah, so some more standardization there got the chill is a bit um, tedious because you have to look one by one. Okay. Uh, and the rest here is this one. The last one here is volume name. This is the volume number. And this is page number. Uh, so you have to make sure for articles you should have uh, volume name, a volume number. And also the uh, the page number, sorry. I did that some more. So sometimes uh, the, the page number is missing. So you have to make sure that all of your uh, articles or release have the details. Okay, so that's the references thing, does it? Uh, appendices uh, is optional. So sometimes you put like extra figure or pictures that you want to put here. So you have, you may put it under this section. You level it like appendix one. You can also have different uh, section. Appendix one is about what uh, about pictures. Appendix two is about uh, maybe uh, data, raw data that you have. Huh? So, but you have to name it. Maybe this one is what. Okay. Uh, Do's and don'ts in scientific writing. Mind your English. Okay, there are a lot of tools that can help you. Uh, for example, to check your grammar, you can install Grammarly. Okay, Grammarly is free. So what Grammarly does, Grammarly will check your grammar. So it will highlight the mistakes. Okay. Uh, and also you can, if let's say for paraphrasing, there are lots of paraphrasing tools. One of them is Quillbot. Um, there are others as well. So you you can type la Google cherry paraphrasing. Paraphrasing tool is uh, the one that helps you to paraphrase. But you have to know that the, all of these they are uh, artificial intelligence. They are artificial intelligence uh, tools. Means that they are computer based. So sometimes you have to examine uh, the sentences that have been paraphrased, especially. Uh, whether it matches or not with the actual meaning. That's why uh, in the last practice, I asked you to examine, isn't it, what has been paraphrased by the tools, uh, whether it matches or not. Because sometimes uh, it just, you know, like uh, paraphrase, but it doesn't, sometimes doesn't make sense. Uh, it's same like Google Translate, lah. Like you translate English to Malay, right? and sometimes some of the, the things translated doesn't make sense. Uh, so how you know that you as a maybe Malay speaker, you know that it doesn't make sense. So in 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 the context of uh, scientific writing, you're a scientist, of course, you understand what should be written. Yeah. So that's why you have to, you cannot uh, take it solely, lah, whatever that has been um, paraphrased. Okay. Grammar, um, maybe tak ada masalah sangat because, uh, but you also have to ni lah, proofread lah, because it, somehow it needs human touch. Yeah, because all of these are artificial intelligence uh, tools. So here, that, the, that sense of human. Okay? Uh, mind the coherency. What is meant by coherency? Coherency is continuity. Means that whenever you write sentences, there must be a continuation from the previous uh, sentence, from the previous paragraph, from the previous chapter. Yeah? Coherency is... Uh, Continuity, kesinambungan. Continuity of your points. Okay, 
and also uh, talking about writing uh, in any uh, section, please do not write long paragraph. Yeah, avoid, avoid long paragraph. Uh, I think sometimes students forget to split the paragraphs. So they would write like one page through, so two paragraphs and panjang. So you logically, if you are the readers la, yourself, then you are given a document of one page of long paragraphs. So you are happening and you are lost. You're going to be lost somewhere. So why don't you split it? Split, always a, a good practice to split into two or three paragraphs. So when you write me, you're going to, you're going to imagine yourself as a reader as well. Okay. Um, Macam mana orang nak faham apa yang awak nak cakap macam tu? Uh, so that kind of things you have to, you have to ni lah visualize this thing. Uh, you, you want something, you explain something. How you want to make it easier for others to understand? Make a flow chart. Okay, uh, something like that. So you have to also, when you write, of course you are on one side, one end. But of, also you have to imagine the, the other's end. The other's end, the readers. Imagine yourself. You yourself as a reader, do you understand what you write? Does it make sense or not? Okay. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, long paragraph me is uh, one of the mistakes. And then uh, proofread before submitting. What is meant by proofread? Proofread, uh, proofread is checking. Like check, like you read again, read and read again. Okay. Uh, tengok ada tak silap. Uh, so this one you can do it by yourself. Or maybe kalau rajin suruh orang lain, tapi you yourself can proofread. And it's not just once. Yeah? So you can proofread. You have to proofread at least many, many times. Okay. Uh, the better, the more, the better. Lah. You would identify oh, lots of mistakes or this uh, this thing. You perhaps maybe subscripts are to this, superscripts are to this. So that's the importance of proofreading. And then mind the scientific names, units, terms. Okay. You know scientific names, right? For example. Asterisia coli. So what you have to do? The basic thing you should italicize. That's the thing. And then another rule of scientific names is that you cannot mention, let's say in the same document, you cannot mention asterisia coli uh, uh, throughout the document. So you have, you just have to mention once for the first time asterisia coli. And the next one is you say E. coli, that, that's the import, that's the use of every rating, the genius too. Okay, so whenever you have mentioned for the first time in the same document, then subsequent time, you just put E. coli. Okay, of course, this one should be italicized as well. Okay, uh, so uh, I don't have an example with it. Um, let me see, I think that's an example. Um, bear with me some more minutes. Huh? Uh, I could have been next one and look up with that. Ah, okay, Chantonia Machini. Okay, this is an introduction. Okay, the first the first time is mentioned over here. Full name then. First time mentioned. Spell full names. Okay. Okay, uh, so let's, this is what I mentioned on scientific names. First time you mentioned uh, full name, right? Sacramentus cerevisiae. But the second and the subsequent times you mention, okay, for example, in the next sentence, in a recent study, S cerevisiae has been used to ferment. So you cannot spell again enough Saccharomyces in full. So you have to use abbreviated form. Okay, so this is this is the the use of uh, abbreviated too. Okay, uh, so don't write. Saccharomyces cerevisiae again, Saccharomyces, I mean by the genus one. Uh, you should abbreviate the genus name. 
You know genus species study. This one is genus, huh? This one is genus, right? Genus. This one is species. So you, you know already the order of organism, and uh, so the genus should be abbreviated. This is one of the mistakes that student did. Okay, uh, back to the things here. Um, yeah, you need, just now I've mentioned, terminologies before you use any scientific terms, uh, make sure you understand what it means. For example, culture. What is culture? What is media? What does it mean? Strain. Okay. Google, 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 you write. Okay. Don't use uh, wrongly the terms. Uh, this is just an example, eh? very, very big. Okay, this one, this is what I meant just now. Uh, and this is abstract of a FYP. Uh, this is introductory statement. Intro statement. What I mentioned just now. Okay, this one is, the next one is problem statement. There is a need for the development of this. Okay, problem statement could be two sentences. Okay, the next one here is M, right? The M refers to the the methods, how the work is done, what's done. Okay. So the next one is results. This is results. And finally, the uh, conclusion and also indication. Okay, this is just to show you an example of how an abstract is written for uh, uh, FYP thesis. I think I've mentioned all the points. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much for your attention. So the basic things that we have learned today is thesis. What are uh, what is thesis? Why you write thesis? When it is needed? The structure of thesis: abstract, intro, literature review, material methods, results and discussion, conclusion, future work, yeah, references. Okay, you can see that now there are some similarities as well as differences between thesis and proposal. Okay, thesis you have to write at the end of your FYP too. Okay, I'll I'll show you this um scribbles yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention about the paraphrasing activity. Um, please uh, participate, those who haven't, because I want to mark it. I want to give some feedbacks. Okay, so those who haven't participated, please uh, drop your answer in the Padlet on Elite. Okay. All right, with that, thank you very much for your attention. Um, yeah, post the presentation. How should we submit the link? I think uh, did I provide it on the e link? Uh, post the submission. You see post the submission? Uh, I think I put the option to drop the link. Yeah. So, uh, Yeah, you just drop the link of your YouTube, uh, of your video, okay? And also you have to upload the PDF. I'm not sure about your interface, whether you got the option to drop or not. And right, uh, so you drop the but online text, thing? online text, you can drop there, isn't it? Let me know if it doesn't work. Yeah, you have you drop the link on the online text field here and you upload the file. Yeah, hope it works. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, Selamat Hari Raya for those celebrating Raya. Have a safe uh, trip back home. Okay, we'll continue after the mid-sem break. Thank you, Doctor.
Yeah, welcome. Hello. Yes. Uh, nak scan QR kot dulu. Uh, siapa nama you? Aku akan nanti scan uh, bot menu tu. Uh, Muhammad Izlan doktor. Izlan. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Manual attendance? Uh, saya doktor. Muhammad Haziq bin Hamidun. Okay, Haziq and Izlan ya? Eh? Okay, doktor. Okay, doktor. Thank you doktor. Okay. Selamat hari raya. Ya, hari raya tu.